Hi, I'm Erica from The Simple Home Plays. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a little bit of something different. Over here, I have some sourdough supplies. Now, I don't know if you follow my blog, which you may or may not even know I have a blog, um, but I do share a lot of sourdough recipes, but a lot of them are sourdough discard recipes. And I have not really dabbled too much into long fermentation. I do have a couple of recipes on there for long fermentation, but I haven't made an actual loaf of long fermented sourdough bread. A company reached out to me wanting to have me review some of their sourdough stuff. I'm not really going to do a review in this video. I'll have a separate blog post. I'll link it if you want to see it, um, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is that I am ready to dive deep into sourdough. Uh, I, for starters, I have had my sourdough starter since January of 2020. That is when I found Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. She is amazing. She's got her own YouTube channel and blog and does so many things. And to me, she's super inspiring. And at the beginning of 2020 or end of 2019, I was really diving deep into all of her content. And I decided to make the switch to cast iron and making my own sourdough starter. So I've had that, like I said, for over four years now. It made the move from Wisconsin to Florida. I have kept it alive. Um, and so I've made lots of different uh, discard recipes, a few long fermented ones, but I'm ready. When they reached out to me and said they wanted me to review their products, I took that as an opportunity to dive in deep. So I'm gonna unbox their stuff again, you know, I'll, I'll leave a link if you want to check it out. Um, and by the end of this video, I'll let you know how I like it, but that's not the point of this. I will have, like I said, a separate post on that, but I figured why not unbox a few things. I also bought some other things, um, personally that are going to, they're things I've had on my list literally for years. Uh, the one item I've had in my Amazon saved cart for literally years, and I just haven't taken the plunge. Um, but Again, I thought this was a great opportunity to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna unbox some of this stuff. Well, all of it actually. Uh, so the first thing that this company that was in their package, it's like a sourdough starter kit. So like everything you would need to start your sourdough journey, uh, they have. So they have some Banneton baskets. These are silicone. Again, I don't really have a lot of experience, but what I've seen, I think they're more or different. They're not silicone. These are kind of nice, I guess, because they can fold down. Um, so there's two, there's a round one and then more of a loaf style. Um, I don't know if I love baking in silicone. I guess you don't, you don't bake in them. They're just to rise and shape your sourdough. So that's okay. Um, a little brush for brushing on olive oil or butter or whatever and i'm guessing this is like a paddle stir type thing i don't know i've never had one but it's it's silicone as well so there's that a scraper i have a bench scraper and i use it a lot um but this is nice it's got some like measurement measurements on there uh conversion chart so that's nice and then this so this is a nice little jar um and it's got it's kind of like a mason jar basically that you can put your starter in and then feed it i've never done this i've been so again i went to lisa from farmhouse and boone and she her method was really simple and straightforward at least at the beginning um, so you just put some, you know, you, you establish your starter and then you put a little bit of flour and water and just go by consistency. And that's what I've always done. I've never had any issues. I've never been precise, but I've seen a lot of people will have their starter in there and then they feed it. And I guess you can see how much it's risen. I don't know, but this is kind of nice because it's got times and dates or, you know, days of the week on there. And then also comes with a yeah a thermometer sticker i don't know how precise we're getting and then a little cover for 
the jar. Actually, I make my own and I have a, yeah, I have a video on here. I can link it up in the cards if you want, where you can make your own fabric elastic covers. I use them all the time. A lot of my bowls don't have lids and so they're really nice, especially for rising dough, just yeast dough or um, sourdough or honestly a lot of different things. So that's nice. Okay, I guess I have another one of those sticker, what are they? Thermometers, I guess. I wonder how long these last. I don't know, I'm gonna have to read more about it. Anyway, so that's kind of cool. I have another jar. I don't know if I'd like the height of this one. I have mine in like a pancake bowl that has a lid so that I can just put the lid on and put it in the free or the fridge. Um, but I have put it in my mason jars too. So anyway, still nice to have. I love glass jars. Can't have enough of them in my opinion. Um, so now let me move on to a couple of other things that I purchased for myself. Okay. I forgot one more thing, which I feel like is super important that came in that box. And that is the I don't know what do you call it razor blade scoring tool um, so it's got the blades in here it's got a nice little protective case that once you put the blade on then you can keep it in there so that's exciting and then i bought myself a scale uh i had one back in the day like years ago never used it um and now I'm starting to get more into eating better and different things. So that's going to be useful for that. I don't really know how much I'll use it for that, to be honest, but for making sourdough bread, I'm definitely going to use that. So I bought one of those. And then this is what I've had on my list for years. I'm sorry if this is shaking, I've got you propped up high on something, but I did buy this off of Amazon, like I said. guessed already. I bought myself a beautiful enameled Dutch oven. I'm so excited. I have been wanting one of these forever. And yeah, I got it from Lodge. Uh, I have, that's all I use in terms of my cast iron. Um, I've got a dual handle, like 12 inch pan, a 10 inch and an eight inch. I've got um, a skillet. I love cast iron. I use it literally every day. And this is something that's been missing in my collection, I guess, if you will. Uh, I got the color Oyster and um, yeah, I'm so excited. I really have been wanting to make um, one of those nice round sourdough loaves. I also feel like this can be used for so many different things. Um, yeah everything that I have gotten. I'm super excited. I'm ready to dive in. Of course, I choose a really busy time in life to try this out, uh, but it's almost summer. Things are going to start winding down a little bit, so I'm excited to test things out. So we're going to swap, swap, switch over to actually making sourdough bread uh, for the first time. So I'm super excited about that, but it's not gonna be today, so I'm gonna be wearing something different, uh, totally a separate day in the future, but I wanted to unbox all this stuff and to show you what I got. I don't think all of this is necessary. Uh, I know it's not all necessary, but um, it's just, I've stuck with sourdough long enough. I feel like at this point, I'm ready to take the dive. And um, so I wanted to get all of the proper things that you need to make your sourdough. Right. So anyway, I will see you in a little bit. So I am coming to you not as a total expert, but I am just going to share the process of what I did to make my very first sourdough loaf. So first we're starting with my sourdough starter. I pulled this out of the refrigerator and I'm just going to give it a quick stir. I have seen people talk about being able to pull their starter out and just use it to make breads and things like that. This specific recipe says that I need to feed it and get it all nice and active and bubbly. Uh, I will leave the recipe down below. It is from Farmhouse on Boom, same blog that I was just talking about in the intro. Um, but I'm just going to feed my starter. Now, as I said, I take a very 
I don't know if it's a lazy or easy approach in terms of feeding my sourdough starter. Uh, for those people who are really into it, this is probably not the proper, well, it's not the proper way. You should be measuring with a scale and all of those things. I don't do that. I go by consistency. I'm looking for more of like a pancake batter type consistency. That has served me well for every recipe that I've ever made in terms of sourdough. Um, but now we're just going to let it sit. And I will tell you a little ridiculous story. <laughs> so I put that in my oven with the light on so that it would rise faster and I could get the loaf made while it was still light out. So I would have a good video footage as well as some pictures. And I forgot it was in there and I preheated the oven to 400 degrees. And um, I almost had a panic attack because I've had this starter forever. So the outer part of the starter was baked or about to be baked. It was like, you know, if I would have let it go any longer, it would have been something, bread, I don't know what. Luckily, the inside of my sourdough starter was fine. It wasn't hot. It was like, a, the temperature it should be like around 75 degrees, thankfully. So I put it into a different mason jar that I had. I fed it again just to be safe and I, I needed a little bit more anyway, so I fed it again. So that is why I'm coming to you at this part in the dark because that took a little bit more time than I was anticipating. So, uh, lesson learned on that. <laughs> anyway, I'm just following the directions of her recipe. I'm going to be quiet now and just let you watch. Hopefully this is, you know, calming, but I will come back at the end and let you know how it all turned out. crept into the sky It filled the morning air with warmth and life Sounds of birds in harmony And you there right next to me Through days of warmth and fireside, 
the stars and the moon and the nighttime sky. So at this point, my loaf had done the bulk ferment overnight, and then I was able to shape it and put it in the banneton basket. I let that sit at room temperature for a few hours and then put it in the refrigerator for a few hours. Uh, that supposedly is, it just helps you be able to score it a little bit easier. Um, my thoughts at this point were that I think I let it overproof on that first bulk ferment because it wasn't really keeping shape. And it was a little bit hard to, I don't know, shape into that original ball before it did another ferment. So I think it, it was a little bit overproofed. Uh, that's something I'm, I'm going to have to play with and figure out. Maybe I needed to add a little bit more flour. I'm not really sure. Uh, if you know more about sourdough than me, I would love some feedback or a comment down below. Let me know. Um, but I was really excited about this part, scoring. I've seen people do such beautiful scoring on their sourdough. Um, <laughs> this turned out okay. Actually, it was fine. It wasn't really what I was going for. I didn't really have a plan. I just know that you really need to have that really deep cut first, and then you can do whatever else you want. But that, that first initial cut is important. So I got that, and I thought about doing another one. I don't know. I'm definitely going to experiment. But here is my Dutch oven that I had preheating and I'm going to pop that loaf in. Now one thing that I was, I probably should have taken care of it, but it was that parchment paper that was sticking out. It got really crispy in the oven. Um, so next time I'm just going to trim that up and make sure that it's not hanging out in the 500 degree oven. But here is the loaf. I have no idea if this came out good in terms of how much it rose and all of that, but I can tell you it tasted absolutely amazing. So I think with sourdough, even if something doesn't come out perfectly, it's still edible and still delicious. So cutting into that, I was so excited. Here's what the inside looks like. I feel like it looks good like it's supposed to. We're supposed to have all those pockets and things like that. Um, I don't know, but I was really happy with how it turned out. And this loaf lasted like 0.5 seconds in my house, <laughs> really. Like I was having it for breakfast and, you know, putting some avocados on it and eggs and oh, so good. And just with butter, it was amazing. It was nice and soft on the inside. And then it had that really crispy crust and it was 10 out of 10. And I know it's going to get better the more that I practice. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope that this was interesting to you. And I hope this gives you encouragement to go ahead and try making sourdough for the first time, especially if you've been dabbling in it already. 
take the plunge and make yourself a sourdough loaf. It's so good. But if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. But I will see you next time. Thanks so much for being here.